thanks to uh, Danny Rosen, John Nislawski, and John Macker for coming tonight. John Macker came all the way from Santa Fe, New Mexico to read for us. I first heard John read over 30 years ago when I moved to the Roaring Fork Valley and uh, found a little bookstore there that he owned and uh, he proceeded to become friends and he was really the first great poetry readings I ever heard in my life. And uh, I still carry all those, all those books around with me three decades later. They're still some of my very favorites. Um, so uh, you all in for a treat. Thanks very much. Uh, welcome, Danny Rosen. This is called Meteorite. The man of stone said the mud will return. The rock in his hand heard nothing of the man. Its tone was much too slow. It cared not for the skin in which it was held. At the bottom of its fall, found by the man where it fell, the man who knew no walls. Thanks, Garrett. Thank you, and thank, thank you, everybody, for being here. It's uh, always very special when there's a gathering for things like poetry. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I just want to read a couple of lines from a poet who's uh, become a good friend and very important to me these last couple of years. A guy named Clark Coolidge, who I just read some poems with in San Francisco a few weeks ago. I was going to read a few lines just to bring Clark into the situation. Yeah. It's from a poem called, Don't Walk That Way, Away. <laughs> he found a piece of God lying on the lawn, out by the sanded edges where everyone passes. Far and we, there are no further bridges. He had pitiful thoughts for the chairman pro town. <laughs> it goes on. Clark goes on and on and on. I'm going to just read uh, most of the stuff that I've been writing the last uh, couple weeks or month or so. Or a year. <laughs> this is called uh, Becoming a Member of the American Archaeological Conservancy. For Kyle Harvey and all these students at the excavation. Leslie Scales from Reno took our fill away, took our music, and left a consistent moan of palm phenomena as it began to do what ought to be done, like the laundry, sorted, stacked, and folded, right up to but not quite a lie, the bishop said, and held his hand up to demonstrate just how far a lie can go. Gratitude be to two, licking old gravy. And speaking of imitation, notice the players selected high in the draft these days, instant champs in the press conference, gosh darn this and just like to say that big honor in the moment, taking it day by day, that's what it's all about. Grateful and spreading his arms just like the bishop, that lying prick. <laughs> the sun appeared after a long, hard sequence of logic, of feeling, of in, of out, of sorts, of wanting to actually believe the headline. Poetry pokes the mind with captions, photo, with caption photos of people screaming. Like in War of the Worlds, masses streaming out of the city on the way to Colorado, where the river's colored red like any neck in these parts, son. We take mistranslation serious, mighty serious. And when we say mighty, mighty is what we mean, no matter how separated we may be 
from reality. <laughs> Just a little reminder to tune your elbows. <laughs> That's where the meaning comes from. Um, a lot of times with poetry, that's kind of what's happened with me with poetry over the last couple of years, it's, it's really become an exercise of discovery. I don't know what I'm going to write about. All I need is a way in. I mean, we all have lifetimes of too much experience. And I'm just looking for a way in, a line or a thought or whatever. And, uh, and then, if the poem's about anything, I'll learn about it after the fact. And a, a big way in for me these last, uh, this last while has been uh, thumbing <laughs> text messages. And uh, so I'm going to read some text messages. This text to Garrett. It's not a long recovery as much as the beginning of a kind of fall, an entry into somewhere almost a place, hazy some days and utter clarity, plain as way more than take your pick. It's hard to go wrong with this atmosphere, these canals, these lovers from Venice on the square as Venus rises, as it usually does at just the right time, whether it's convenient or not. It's really worth it. Not worth, not capitalization, but getting off your ass to walk out on the planet and look smack dab into what is often called the middle of a big concert hall, if you will. You will, you will, you will find yourself abreast and immersed, seated and spread, sorted and sent on your way through the realms of outer space. Why not go now? For the mystery is about to remember once and for all, what's up? <laughs> Man, not mostly what text messages are saying. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Why not say it in a fun way? <laughs> to harmony. They grew the world's heaviest peach below the cliffs of the world's largest some kind of flat mountain that always reminds me of some other largest flat mountain that I could never get to the end of even though I was entirely prepared to reach the edge and leap off into the stormy sea where monsters are mostly portrayed as not friendly except for the world's friendliest fire breather, found to be not extinct, but a really cool relic you could spy on rare occasions on not the world's longest walk, when we walked past the changing of the guard. Right before our eyes, we ran into someone who might be called Skip, who stood up and just really dominated the entire scene as if the world's largest occurrence of not sure what, but there it is, dripping down your chin. <laughs> Text to Kyle. <laughs> Greetings from Ellie's Mutt Hut on South State Street in California, <laughs> long and lean and stretched and fractured, and faulted, and jumbled, and geological, and called melange. Stuff from all over the place. Arcata, Eureka, Fortuna, Carlotta, and down the line of slump basin towns, Hawaiian-like islands, rifted on a crustal conveyor, glomming on, not without difficulty, to the carnivorous continent plowing west, rubbing the ocean's bottom, diving down, pressure head melting, rising, exploding over Portland and Seattle. Tectonics are so nasty. Island arcs are so sexy. 
the way they accrete, mix with mud, and stream down from what was mountain, down into the devastating trench, morphing like our friends, person to person. Now with Neely in his Bay milieu, now with Tyler in his Franciscan complex, hard guy in the workshop, little girl on a floor jack on oil spilled on kitty litter. In low light, I can read the bumper, make diesel cheap again. And I, and I can feel the quake coming, disintegrating the trees, the hills, the view I see a few million years, highlands rise, rivers run, and change their mind and move up to a real nice place out on Highway 36. A good place, better than most, to tough it out, whatever it may be. Whatever volcanic tsunami, hell, fire, rain of glowing rock, falling out, Mendocino heading north. Woo.